Santo Domingo Festival in Managua, a special date in Nicaragua's religious calendar. This is an occasion for revelry in which pagan and Christian traditions mingle. For the women, it's also hard work. They have to organize refreshments while the men do most of the cooking. Throughout the Sandinista years, links between state and church were stretched to almost breaking. But the demise of the revolution last February strengthened the influence of the Roman Catholic Church. Like their new president, Violeta Chamorro, most Nicaraguans were devout Catholics. And in true festival fashion, a beauty contest makes the prettiest girl queen for the duration. This year's queen is an 18 year old. She's one of a family of 12 children and plans to go to university. Her education was shaped by the revolutionary ideals that declared all citizens equal. The reality is somewhat different. At 31, Marta Flores has six children. She says the marks on her face are the result of another controversy. She does not intend to report the assault to the police because she's ashamed. The Sandinista flag on top of her house proclaims her allegiance to the revolution, which gave women access to jobs, education, and political status. Here, former president Daniel Ortega is addressing a meeting of mothers and sons of the revolution. Today, many women feel they have yet to acquire gender-related status, that they deserve respect as women. Women did organize themselves in the cities to deal with the problem of violence. Many victims appear willing to seek outside help in the early stages, but then refuse to follow the legal process. A woman must press charges herself as domestic violence is considered a personal rather than a criminal offense. One reason many back off is that they need the economic support that men provide. There are other forms of assistance too, but they're far from sufficient. This center was opened three years ago. There are five others in Managua. Services include health and sex education, family planning, antenatal care, and legal advice. Contraceptives are also available at minimal cost. The center and others like it are underfunded. Volunteers make up the bulk of the staff. The financial supervisor, Meg Braddock, is English. The constitutional situation, the constitution of Nicaragua specifies that everyone has equal rights. And it's a, a good constitution and very good it's from the women's point of view. In practice, so having a constitution doesn't mean to say that the, the practice immediately follows. And I think women are st have still got a very long way to go in terms of uh, being able to participate fully as equal members of the society here. The centers also run workshops and deal with education through the use of theater. Short plays explore the ups and downs of a typical Nicaraguan relationship. In one, the man shows little regard for family commitments, popping home when he feels like it, sometimes with money, more often drunk and empty-handed. Another sketch deals with domestic violence, drawing the audience into a world many of them know too well. Unfortunately, the new government has inherited a country devastated by 10 years of guerrilla war. It cannot afford to even maintain essential services. I think in the urban areas, people are aware of family planning methods, but they don't, often don't know where to get them. In the rural areas, it's much more frequent that people don't have any fam do any family planning at all. They start having children at a very early age. It's very common in the country areas that people have women have their first child when they're 14 or 15 years old. The women's vote was seen as decisive in ousting the Sandinistas and bringing to power Nicaragua's first woman president. The settlement of the Contra War was the promised reward for electing the US-backed administration. Chamorro's campaign was well orchestrated. Clad in virginal white, she appeared like the unforgiving mother promising to put Nicaragua's shattered family back together. This club is the largest of its kind in Managua. Prostitutes charge up to $50. On this occasion, the camera crew was told some customers did not wish to be identified. They were so-called Miami boys back in post-revolutionary Nicaragua after years of voluntary exile in the United States. 
At the beginning of the revolution, training and job opportunities for women did much to reduce the number of prostitutes. Programs for cartons, the economy collapsed. The Chamorro government has not reinstated the women. Some 600 delegates attended the Sandinista Congress in July. Women, outnumbered by men of the higher echelons, were divided. Some asserted their right to define their own interests and needs. The debate came at a difficult time for the movement now in opposition. Electoral defeat meant having to reassess policies and bridge inevitable divisions of the lives. Splits became evident in the debate on women's issues. Demands for nationwide sex education and family planning programs caused a great deal of controversy. Some delegates argued this could be seen as advocating abortion. Differences were not resolved, but at least grievances were aired. For some, the need to present a united front appeared less urgent than change. We consider that it's not only for, uh, presence of women in different levels, but it also means that we have to gain men and we have to gain the other people in our struggle because we are still so, lit so little in these levels. So we have to, we have to struggle f harder. So I would say that although there is a lot of women participation at the base level, this is not what we are having at the higher levels in the Congress, in the National Assembly and in the National Directorate. The Sandinista government was nervous about a direct confrontation with the Roman Catholic Church on issues affecting women directly. Abortion was never legalized. Today, clandestine abortions are still a main cause of maternal death in Nicaragua. The revolution promised to create the new man. What about the new woman? The revolution did give them a taste of liberation, and most of all, a political platform. Today, many of them claim that after 20 months in office, President Chamorro's female coalition is undermining some of their hard-won rights. As the much-awaited economic recovery fails to materialize, measures brought in by the government have had a very negative impact on the poor. Many of them are women who have to maintain large households on drastically reduced budgets. They fear they may lose out further.